when your class represents a concept of numerical values, uh, such uh, classes are mm, very good candidates uh, for uh, overloading arithmetic operators uh, to provide a typical uh, look and feel uh, when um, the clients of your class uh, start using it and uh, start building expressions. A good uh, example of such a concept is a complex number, for instance, with the real and imaginary part. Uh, well, complex numbers are actually supplied by C++ standard library. Um, consider um, a number that is ex expressing a fraction, uh, such as, uh, you know, using a numerator and denominator. So basically something like uh, 1 divided by 3. Right, so we know uh, from math that this uh, provides, uh, like this resolves to an uh, uh, essentially uh, an um, endless periodic uh, fraction. Um, and so it it's, uh, has to be approximated. If we need to capture the result of this, it needs to be rounded in order to be able to store it as a uh, floating point number. So an alternative to this, um, instead of uh, saving a floating point number, we can just remember the numerator and, uh, and uh, deno uh, denominator um, and uh, express it uh, by using two numbers. Okay, so we could build a class name rational, something like this, and implement its functionality uh, using our own uh, defined type. So the requirements here would be that uh, the denominator is not zero because division by zero is, uh, is illegal. So it's also true that denominator typically kept strictly positive, uh, so that's part of sort of like normalization um, of the rational number. And it can also be simplified, right? So if we had something like 2 divided by 6, uh, that can be simplified as 1 divided by 3, so that we can obviously uh, keep, uh, uh, keep this uh, simple uh, version of the fraction as opposed to uh, uh, some sort of a combination of common factors. So this is a good candidate uh, to become a class and uh, let's uh, consider um, if we could benefit from uh, implementing uh, some of the uh, overloaded operators uh, with respect to this concept of a rational number. Uh, so when we would be using it, uh, the possibility is that if we use the constructor and constructor takes two arguments that would represent, uh, represent a fraction. So this would be a numer uh, numerator um, right here and this would be the denominator. So uh, using this type of constructor, just represent um, denominator equal 1. And so a constructor could potentially do some extra effort to reduce or simplify this fraction. As we said, if this is a combination of common factors, then we can uh, simplify it. Uh, or normalize. And division by zero obviously should be not allowed perhaps sometime at, uh, uh, at runtime. Uh, we could uh, generate some sort of uh, error related to um, uh, division by zero. So at the same time, of course, uh, it should be possible to convert if, uh, this, uh, this rational uh, number uh, to a double. Right, so double is a, a practical way of storing um, uh, floating point um, real numbers uh, in programming languages. So that would be uh, possible to do with the member function that uh, is intended to convert it to a specific type. You can take a look at the example of rational class with uh, multiple members that uh, represent the concept as a whole. So uh, if you consider a possible organization of this uh, class name rational, this concept of basically numerator and denominator stored as integers right here. So we could call it rational and we could uh, store two of these uh, private integers as part of our object. And then we, we begin to uh, provide uh, various types of um, operators 
for instance, uh, comparison for equality, if implemented as a binary um, operator, um, I mean, it is a binary operator, but if implemented as a member function, then this would be the signature that we use. Um, and since this is just a comparison, it does not uh, change anything uh, here. So, of course, it's reasonable to also uh, qualify it as constant member function. So this would be its implementation. Basically, you take the signature, you paste it in your implementation file. You, of course, have to prefix the name of the function with the uh, with the scope uh, resolution operator and uh, the name of the class to explain what this is to the compiler. And then you can just uh, write uh, your implementation. Now, this is another uh, example of uh, unary negation. So basically, you want to set uh, uh, set uh, one variable equals uh, n uh, negative uh, value of the other. So this is a unary negation, and uh, if implemented as member function, then it does not require any operators. All we have to do is just construct uh, a copy of our rational uh, number, and uh, we just... Uh, uh, negate the numerator, right? Because that's a standard way of doing something like this. And notice, of course, that this uh, operator does not change uh, the actual instance here. What it does, it constructs brand new copy because y should not change. Uh, it, the result of negative y will be what we construct but the original object y is left unmodified therefore this function once again is qualified as a constant uh, member function so that uh, is uh, an example of uh, um, an operator once again one of the arithmetic operators that uh, makes uh, it uh, intuitive for the users to use the concept of the rational number with, uh, you know, that is combi combined from two integers. So another example, I mean, this is exactly what we already did uh, with uh, our string example that we've uh, implemented the, uh, the, uh, this uh, operator that connects our string with uh, standard output stream uh, type of um, devices. Uh, uh, and uh, in that case, I mean, it's just one-to-one -one copy. In our case, we use uh, the string object uh, to pass as the right-hand side of this binary operator. Um, but uh, in this case, it's a rational um, uh, number. And once again, imp if implemented as non-member, so that's non-member, um, but you still have to be able to access uh, private me uh, private uh, data members of your class, then you have to uh, declare it as a friend. So our string example demonstrates this exactly right. Uh, and again, we've used this operator uh, many, many times, and we added this quite early to our system. <laughs>